Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Ah, <laughs> it's so relaxing. Uh, uh. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, Man of Steel number three of six. I read like two issues before I realized this is not an ongoing series. Uh, this is the, the big Brian Michael Bendis book. He's doing Superman, he's doing DC Comics. It's a big, big, big deal. Uh, I thought he was going to be trash. I thought we were going to get the same horrible writing he's been doing at Marvel for the last couple years. And instead, he's been quite, quite revigorated. Reinvigorated. Yeah, revigorated. It's fine. Yeah, I'll allow it. Uh, so anyway, this is the bad guy whose name is Kro Krokmang Nargul Joe. Ro. I have no idea what this guy. He's just got one of those random... It's, it's not a memorable name, but uh, I like his uh, different colored eyes. That's pretty cool. Fairly good villain. He looked very, very generic when they first showed uh, the designs. His deal is that um, he's basically... Uh, he hates Kryptonians because they use a lot of resources. He's kind of like space Antifa. He wanted to blow up Krypton. He actually went to this like council of uh, elders in space... And uh, he, he basically did shark tanks. Hello, sharks. My name is Ronar Krogvogel, and I've got a way to save resources throughout the galaxy, and you only have to blow up one planet. <laughs> uh, you know that bald guy's going to pretend to invest and then just back out at the last second? He always does that. I hate that guy. I like the blonde one. Oh, she's cute. Anyway, uh, so uh, he basically asked permission and for help to blow up Krypton, and then they turn him down, even though people, they, uh, several of them seem interested in the idea. Um, uh, they're like, we'll invest $200,000, but I want a 20% stake in your blowing up Krypton. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so then it's funny. They turn him down, and then uh, Krypton blows up uh, sometime shortly later, and they're like, so, Kronarg, did you? And he's like, what? What? Huh? What? Um, but anyway, I got this good, uh, I like this uh, cover. It's uh, young Kal-El uh, flying to Earth so he can be used by um, uh, people uh, interested in uh, defeating uh, Trump and making overly obvious allegories. <laughs> DC, uh, obviously there's a refugee crisis in Europe and there's a border situation that people said they didn't, weren't crazy uh, <laughs> about hearing me talk about. So I've stopped tweeting about it. But I did notice that uh, DC did a, uh, hey, Superman's a refugee, right? Right, right, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Yeah, yeah, he's totally Mexican. Um, but uh, yeah, he's a refugee, but so is General Zod, <laughs> and so is Ursa, and so is Nan, and so probably technically so is, you know, Doomsday. So it's a, your mileage may vary. Uh, the, the whole shtick, uh, uh, a lot of SJWs are trying to rewrite him as SJ, or, you know, uh, Kal-El is some sort of blanket endorsement of open borders. Um, he's really a blanket endorsement of this. Middle Americana. You know, he goes and he gets raised by this, you know, a, a country couple, and uh, they give him good mis Midwestern values, and he knows what to do when he's given uh, incredible power. He's not the symbolism for random people doing whatever. He's a symbolism for America itself. So uh, anyway, he literally owns red, blue, and yellow. Uh, so anyway, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this is uh, some good, subtle storytelling. So we start with Earth. And uh, the first thing I picked up is, you know, usually America's in the front. And I go, oh, that's where they're putting uh, North Pole. And then, oh, we see why. This is, that's actually really good story. It's very subtle. You know, so we go from there to, uh, by the way, I got to say, this art on this cover, I've just been staring at it. That is so good. Oh, my gosh. Um, so he goes, he crashes. Into he's over by the Fortress of Solitude, which, uh, earmuffs, earmuffs, <laughs> have you got kids in the room? What if Fortress of Solitude is literally just the place that kal went to crank one out? Like, that's, what if that was the only reason it existed? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Batman's coming. To ah, ah, I was changing. Uh, okay, earmuffs off. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, really cool. I really like this look. Although, I had to call a little bit of shenanigans. So apparently, I don't see a ship. Apparently, he's smashed into <laughs> Earth at terminal velocity. I've got to say, this is a very durable clothing he's got on. Like, I'm surprised that this belt didn't just explode upon impact. Uh, but anyway, he goes to the um, Fortress of Solitude, and it's, it's, it's very good. I want to emphasize that this is Brian Michael Bendis, the guy who destroyed his reputation and was a complete clown and fraud his last couple years. And look at this. Can you imagine if this would have been Marvel? It would have been like, first of all, it would have been a 15-year-old girl, and she would have been like, space is like totally like whatever. Oh my God, terminal velocity terminally boring like it just would have been like that over and over and over but it, it's the th you know what the thing is about bendis is he respects dc he respects them as a company he know he has a boss he, the, the thing is you, you got to imagine uh bendis is probably what about 50 52 imagine him he's been in comics for 20 25 years and you're 50 years old and you're putting out a marvel comic and right next to on the stands is Erica Henderson's Squirrel Girl. And it's embarrassing. You go, oh, oh, Marvel's a joke now. Like, I work at a joke company. I might as well be making freaking whoopee cushions. So anyway, we get this good, you know, word, wordless um, opening scene. The only uh, person who talks is the, uh, the little robot. I think this robot's been around for a while since, like, Maybe like the John Byrne days. Uh, but then we go to um, the main story and we get... Uh, the funny thing is, I got to say, as much as I like this Man of Steel, I wouldn't say I'm that crazy about this version of Superman. There's nothing wrong with him. But again, he's not that interesting. What, what Bendis is doing is making a really, really interesting story uh, with Superman in it. Um, but uh, he just, it's a funny thing where he's standing in the dark. He looks all creepy. And he's just like, oh, hey, yeah, I forgot. You guys can't see in the lowest of light. Uh, but what I didn't like was this page, um, these two pages. She basically says, uh, oh, I'm going to help you. He's like, I'm going to help you with your investigation. And here's Batman. And Batman is just a little chatty Cathy. Look, he's, he's, he's a da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Oh, he's oh, practically anything that could establish or argue his point was destroyed by this fire. Plus, there are several possible indignation points and start... You know who, uh, who this, uh, could have, uh, this language could have been in? It could have been in her, who's the, the, whatever you call the chief fireman, and you say she used to be one of those fire investigators like Robert De Niro played in, in Backdraft. Um, so then, uh, again, this was not ruined in any way. It's just, I'm so, I got so much Bendis PTSD when, when there was none of it in the first two issues. So it's just like little things. He's like, Batman's like, sometimes you have to be a little creative. That's why I stopped the penguin from killing the prime minister of Malaysia. Pins on a map. It's like, oh, ooh, it's, it's like, ooh. It's like, you ever try a food and the first time you try it, you go, ooh, that's not bad. And then you order it again, you go, oh yeah, I hate this. Um, <laughs> this, this dialogue just bothered me a little bit, um, uh, the, when I read it, but the second time it's bothering me a lot more. And then Superman flies away and then chatty Cathy just keeps on chatting up a storm. Something I have learned. If the politest man in the galaxy has to be somewhere so fast, he can't even say goodbye. There's a good reason. Why don't you, you're investigating like serial arson. Just shut up. <laughs> Why are you talking so much? But then we get back to uh, uh, wordless storytelling, some good acting, uh, you know, the artist doing acting. Even like this body language, look at, I'm going to pull back. Uh, that's quite good body language on, on uh, Cal. That's, you know, uh, I actually don't think the face is that great, but if you look at that body language, hold it out there. This is a guy who is shocked and distraught, as he is supposed to be. And there's this great bit where he says, uh, it's not just stuff, it's my heritage. It's the heritage of Krypton. It's the heritage of a dead people. And he's getting angry. So one of the big uh, things about Bendis is he's Jewish. Um, uh, 
And uh, he talked about going to Cleveland to the Superman Museum, and you know the the creators are Jewish, and feeling that this was a Jewish character, very much informed by uh, the history of the Jewish people, uh, not to be co-opted for generic immigrants everywhere. But um, uh, obviously, with with uh, uh, the Jews, they get chased out of a lot of places. They're constantly being chased across all over the globe. So they have this. Uh, uh, weird pride in this, um, but also uh, uh, very strong into their history. So the analogy of Kryptonians to Jewish people uh, works a lot better than Kryptonians to, you know, uh, illegal aliens. Yes, I know he's an alien. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, so then here comes uh, Supergirl, and I was pretty happy because she looks cool. She, um, uh, I was also happy because of this. We don't have to get black pantyhose because of they're afraid of offending SJWs like on the TV show. But she looks cool. Um, she just kind of shows up. Um, here's what I didn't like. Cal, what the actual... And there's going to be a curse word there. I was like... Ah. So one of the things about SJWs is the masculinized woman. And we saw this especially in the... Uh, God, what was that awful book by Tom Taylor? We know where uh, Jessica Jones is grabbing Luke Cage by the wrist and like shoving him and using him as a prop it's like i was fine with no cursing i know she didn't curse but she almost did it's like i don't i don't want to see that i don't want to see it from superman i don't want to see it from supergirl and then like later she she says uh she, she's a little i mean i know she's supposed to be young but she actually does like a uh oh okay so they they show more of the cliffhanger um where you know uh lois and john were they're kind of gone uh, and explaining what happened. So what I think's happened is I think Luthor has offered them protection in exchange for something. I think Luthor, uh, you know, obviously it could be Brainiac. I think it's Luthor. And um, I do not like that Superman face. That is way too much eyelashes. Um, uh, but it's pretty good. Um, they're basically very concerned. They're like, okay, you go take care of your people. This one, I actually really love this bit over here in the... Uh, so, uh, spoiler, spoiler. Kandor has been destroyed. It was unclear whether the people were killed or just the city was destroyed. But to me, it was implied that the people were also killed. So he says, I know all of the Kandorian names, every one of them. Akvar, Elgar Kur, Les Lar, Dik Z. Lily Z, Lyle Z, uh, and then uh, Van, he starts talking Van Z. Uh, I found that uh, very endearing. This part was just, woo lad, look at that. That is awesome. So he's very determined. He's on the case, um, going, uh, trying to track down people. You know, I like when he's, uh, there's this good part I go, uh, he, so he's checking on, you know, the Daily Planet, and he says, why do I love the sound of Perry's White's panicked, and he was going to say voice. And I thought that was kind of endearing that, you know, obviously he has people that he's, some people he's connected with more than others. Um, so then he gets uh, hit by some kind of blast. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know women have to be written like this. I, uh, I have friends of various ages, and uh, the most mature friends I have are the ones in their 20s. Um, these are real friends, not Twitter people you know like I met them in real life we've hung out and stuff like that and I've actually mentioned how I uh, one of the things I find frustrating is women my age are very very immature I think they think it's delightful to be cutesy and twee and cross their eyes and stick their tongues out I'm like what are you doing the younger people they're trying to mature they're trying to grow up so um but I just didn't like how she talked so uh, he gets knocked out and she catches him that's not a problem you know he's not like a total phoebe uh, they're helping each other out. Um, and she goes, she's talking about the person who attacked him. And she goes, has the future dead person introduced himself? And then Superman's just normal. He goes, not yet. And he goes, she goes, hey, dead guy, you got anything to say for yourself? And I'm like, eh, stop. Stop making the person who curses and is, like, go to killing the woman. Like, what happened to, like, heart, hope, and whatever the other thing is. But uh, that's a pretty cool scene right there. Um, so I'm excited about them fighting Krognar, Grognul, Grognan. 
Um, uh, so this was, a, I, I, I probably harped on things that I didn't like more in the review than I did while reading it. While reading it, I enjoyed it a lot. And the things that I didn't like, they were just little blips. I really find this a very well done story, um, uh, very thought out. Uh, Bendis has put more care into this than he's put into the last 10 years of his Marvel work. So it's definitely recommend. So anyway, uh, oh, in other news, Jawbreakers Lost Souls Indiegogo is over 9,000. Uh, somebody hit me up in DMs to congratulate me. I, uh, I, you know, I knew it was getting close, but it's actually over 9,000. It's 9,003 backers. So now it becomes a question of what do I do? It's at 346,500. I haven't done the, the DM to uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan yet, but I'm, I'm embarrassed. Like, I, I had an opportunity and I screwed it up. So it's like, and I didn't write to him like a week or so ago. I didn't, get, I didn't hear back. So I think I screwed that one up. So right now I'm debating about whether to just uh, cut it off at, at 30, th you know, $350,000. I don't know if I can get up to 10,000. I got to 9,000, but obviously things have slowed down. I've kind of maxed out my audience right now. Um, you know, that's, that can be a goal for a future uh, thing. So tell me what you think I should do. Should I, um, I'm probably going to send one more DM <laughs> and uh, see if uh, that interview is still on. I, um, I think I missed my opportunity, though. Uh, but tell me what you think I should do. And uh, the other thing is that I put on Twitter an open call for artists for this 22-page uh, um, Devil Dog origin story to be written by uh, Chuck Dixon. So uh, my DMs are open. You just got to DM me. So the deal is uh, send current work, only current, um, sequ and sequential work. Sequentials is this. This is sequentials. Oh, this is a bad example because it's a double page spread and that's a double page spread as well uh stuff like this is sequentials you're in a scene you're in another scene with a different locale doesn't have to be a lot of pages two honestly i know back in the day they used to say four or five pages honestly two pages is fine um and um uh if you know if you have them uh so trying to uh i feel like i should be able to find someone fairly quick trying to sign someone this week and uh, so I'll be checking out your stuff. Now, obviously, uh, there's a certain standard. <laughs> you, you've seen the art by John Malin. You've seen the art by Kelsey Shannon. You've seen the art by uh, uh, Simon Bennett. Uh, you've seen a lot of the um, fan art. So not to be condescending, but it needs to be professional quality. Uh, just ask yourself, have you bought a book that is drawn at the level that you draw at? And if you have, then definitely send it in. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. <laughs> I can't. I started laughing and looking at his face right there. Let's find a cooler face. Uh, oh, yeah, this one right here. This one, he just looks awesome. Uh, you know, uh, uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. So if you buy this book, which you should, it's really good. Um, take a picture of it. Uh, hashtag uh, move the needle. Put it up on Twitter. At all the people involved, the store you bought it at. Let them know you're a real customer. You actually buy stuff. Um, and tell the stuff you like. Keep doing more stuff like this. Bendis, keep it up. You're, you're doing good. Thanks for watching. Going to the comic shop uh, uh, right now. I'll probably do, yeah, I, I, I'm still behind, but I'm going to mix. I'm going to limit myself to something like seven comics. Uh, so I should be able to get through those and my backlog in the next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.